now with Dan from a local SEO guide. He knows his SEO pretty well. He's a great speaker um, and he's a great person. Um, he has great stuff on Twitter. He's super smart. So I'm looking forward to talking to him about what he knows about, I think, local SEO and some other topics. So it should be fun. SEMrush is an online visibility, management, and content marketing SaaS platform. Today, it unites over 5 million marketers worldwide and assists them in their every day with help of its key tools, competitive research, SEO, content marketing, social media, and advertising. SEM Rush always aims to provide a product solution to all marketing experts to ease their workflow. Check out their newly launched tool, Content Marketplace. Now you can order and optimize blog posts in just a few clicks to fuel your content marketing efforts. Check them out at semrush.com and thank you for sponsoring SEM Rush. Dan, thank you so much for meeting me here at the City Winery. Yeah, thanks for having me, Barry. It's a great place. You own the place? Oh, you drink I, a lot. So. Both. I, I both drink a lot <laughs> and I own the place. Awesome. Well, anyway, we're here for Tech SEO Boost, and they rented out this place, right? Yeah. You don't own Tech. You don't own Catalyst. You don't I, own this place just for. The I, I do not, unfortunately. Not, a, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. I do not own a major media company yet. <laughs> but when you do, so people know who you are and how to contact you Please. for a loan. Can you tell people who you are? Yeah, my name is Dan Leapson. I'm the VP of Search at a company called Local SEO Guide. You can find me on Twitter at, at Dan Leapson or email me at Dan at Company. Cool. And you've been in the SEO space since 2007. Yes, sir. And when you got into SEO, what were you doing? Mostly spamming? Yeah, actually, actually, I was definitely mostly spamming. Wasn't everybody? <laughs> so I worked in uh, DTC uh, e-commerce and product, like, like CPG products before it was cool in like 2007, 2008 in the Amazon store before it was cool in like 2007, 2008. So lots of review manipulation before that was like a thing when everyone was doing it, um, before Amazon had its big kind of like push against like soliciting reviews, right? right? Um, before offering people a product for reviews was like a illegal thing before it was even like a banned process. People forget how much Wild West used to be in the, the internet. This is like when Facebook just launched their advertising product, right? And you could just do Facebook ads as like a brand new thing. Yeah. And like the raffle copter giveaways and all that stuff was like a big thing. Yeah, I, you, said, you mentioned illegal, because I don't know how illegal it was, but I know- No, it wasn't illegal then, but it's illegal now. Yeah, <laughs> I actually know some SEOs that actually went to jail over certain types of affiliate schemes. Yeah, mm -hmm. So this was, not, this was not an affiliate scheme. This right. was just simply like DTC, like, hey, yeah. if you review our product, we'll give you like a free product. Or... I still get those emails, please review our products, yeah. and they're kind of worded in an interesting way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you got into the local space, which you're kind of pretty well known for these days. Yeah, yeah, that was I would like to think so. Tw uh, 2012, right? Yeah, 2012, transitioned into local search. And um, why'd you get into local? What, what, what was it about? Yeah, so this was like right after not provided, it was kind of like a big thing, right? And internal SEO became just became increasingly, diff like not difficult, but uh, harder to metric. And this was like right when local was becoming a bigger thing. And the kind of emergence of local organic SEO is a thing too, like right around Google's Venice update, right? When they started localizing organic results. And so I just kind of thought that it would be a really interesting place, right? Like I really liked the kind of wild west feeling of like the early days of SEO and just figuring it out and kind of wanted to be in a space like that. And then you joined the company called Local SEO Guy. Yeah, yeah. Then I so when I first joined Local, I started commenting on like all the blogs. So this is like back when like blog comments was like super cool in 2012, right? And so I was commenting on like localseoguide.com, Andrew Shatland's blog, Mike Blumenthal's blog, all that. Yeah, White Spark met all those guys. Met Andrew at uh, MozCon in 2012, um, and then just and eventually started chatting with him about building out his solo consultancy into a more boutique SEO agency. We met a few times, uh, worked out really well and have been working together ever since. And now you've gr helped grown that company from, I guess, two people when you joined. Yep, two people when I joined. I was the first FTE other than Andrew. And then you grew, now you're at 15 people? F just at our 15th hire, yeah. Awesome, congratulations. Yeah, th thank you, thank you. Um, and your current, your title is VP of Search, right? Yes, I am the VP of Search, whatever that means. Whatever I do all the searchings. Right. So you're an expert on neural matching right here. Oh yes, all of it. The neural <laughs> networks, positronic matrixes, obviously. Those are, those are cool. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know Google uses those yet, but Google does, they recently announced that they use neural matching in local search. Yeah, they did. So it what do you think about that? So first, I think it's super interesting that Danny started doing uh, PR announcements for the Geo team. Uh, we had talked a little bit about this in SMX East, but like Geo and search are different, right? right? Like Geo is in Boulder primarily in New York, and like the search team is out of Mountain View. They don't sit together, all this stuff. And so that kind of like cross team functioning at Google is actually really great for SEOs, right? Like they have like the traditional big company silo stuff. Right. Uh, and so that seems to be really excellent for local SEO, just getting it to be more of a priority for their comms team. It's interesting because a lot of people think that Google My Business and Google Local stuff is so tied to organic search. I got an email on the way here saying, I got an email from the Google My Business team saying we're having a technical issue. Is this why Google's not indexing my website? I'm like, no. 
<laughs> it's not related. Yeah, just <laughs> downstream, right? Like right. it's one of those downstream things that's plugged into Google's organic ranking systems. Right. So Danny basically announced for the first time ever, Google announced a local search update or confirmed the local search update. Yeah, first and, time ever. And we don't really see many local search updates, maybe once every few months to six months, right? The last confirmed one, I believe, was actually the pigeon one. Like the last big one was the right. one that um, kind of pulled in the organic ranking signals into the local pack rankings. Right. And so that was like three or four years ago, right? Like the at least in terms of big announcements. So getting more communication, like better than every four years would be amazing. And I don't think this is about like a local algorithm update per se in terms of how they rank um, certain listings. They still rank them technically the same, in my opinion. It's more about how Google understands the query to how it matches up with the content. Totally, totally. But this is like the this is like the trick in like the Google's comms, right? Where like search is zero sum. So it may not affect ranking, but the net net is it affects ranking, right? right. But I, I agree with you. Like the way that I read it actually is that they took instead of like the pack rankings being a downstream side effect of organic search, right? That there's some organic search ranking factors that trickle into it, that they took technology from the like organic search team and applied it to the system for local search, right? right? So it's not only are they better understanding language like as a whole, but like the actual local, like the geo, Google Geo product in pack rankings, Google My Business can understand language better and not rely on kind of like the core Google systems, which right. is a big step. Yeah, and their advice of course is there's nothing you really need to do. And they link to a Google Health doc which discusses how to rank well in Google Local. Yeah. And it's like, uh, what are the four things? Proximity, relevancy. Prominence. Prominence. And then I guess the listing itself, the Google My Business yeah. listing. Yeah. So are you going to like change anything for clients that got hit? Or is it too early to tell? So we haven't seen any clients get hit. This has like been a big discussion in the local SEO community. Yeah. So everybody I've talked to that does like multi-location enterprise or agencies that deal with like multi-location enterprise has seen no core terminal business KPIs change. So like call tracking leads, Google Analytics traffic, right? Like clickstream data, none of that stuff has changed. Mm -hmm. Just the way that like Google understands results. So, so there's not much to change on that end, right? Like, but if you aren't kind of working to create content for local that is kind of expert content that's written the way that other expert content in that space is written, it means that you're less likely to rank in the future, I think, well, right? Like maybe not today, but in a year. I'm back on your clients not seeing an impact. Mm -hmm. If you're looking at the multi-location, I assume most of those people searching for those types of brands are searching for the brand name, not necessarily searching for like dentists or something like that. Right, but, but the, the, this is also a different in the query type, right? Where so like retail, for instance, has a lot of product related Related searches that Google understands really well, whereas service-related searches have like a lot of mix of like like dentist plus city is a good example, right? Which is why I was asking Danny about the the keyword spam and business name, right? Right, because like like here dentist Boston, right, like would rank better than dentist uh, because of the keyword business name spam. So just seeing like that that change would uh, be more likely to affect service-based businesses just as a whole, right, rather than any anything that's like retail oriented. Right, that makes sense. Um, so you're not making any changes for your clients, just pretty much, pretty much all gun ho. Everybody's happy and everybody's happy. That's cool. Um, anything else you think about this neural matching stuff that people have to be concerned about, or it's really pretty early? Because I know there's a lot of theories about this. Some people were saying, I know um, Joy Hawkins basically said that it's not about proximity; it's about relevancy, which is kind of true based on this neural matching stuff, which is kind of trying to find more relevant yeah. results. Um, and then there was another guy who came out, I forgot his name, so I'm blanking on his name, but basically came out basically thinking that it's like, all right, they're only really shuffling up some of the results, not all the results, more than they're like, the first results kind of sticking more than the second two results. And so what are the theories that... But see, this is like why local search is really difficult, right? Is because it's all about con context, right? Like, like Google ranks things based on the context of the search and the context of their inventory, right? How many pages or how many businesses they have for a thing. So a place like Boston with like lawyers in the middle of the city, right? Like lots of I inventory for Google to rank, but something like, um, I don't know, Beach Hut, Tiki Torch rental or whatever here while it's snowing, probably not a lot of inventory, right? And so would likely have to order those results differently or Pull, pull them based on different factors, right? There's just, there's just not enough stuff to rank things the way they normally would. It's, it's why rural markets are less competitive than urban markets, right? There's just less inventory to compete against, and yeah. so it's easier to win. Used to be good with the old seven packs versus the three packs yeah, now, so. Yeah, exactly, exactly. There was a lot more you could do. Yeah, um, what are your biggest pet peeves right now with Google My Business? Any. Oh yeah, um, so I think it's absurd that you cannot get a dedicated account rep for a multi-location brand on the enterprise side when you have a verified bulk account, particularly if you have a verified bulk account, like a huge AdWords account that are linked together, yeah. that you can't get like cross-functional support on that. And I'm not talking about like ranking help, help this like my, my listing slid two positions, like 
help somebody put a photo of a Nazi on our homepage, right? And that's showing up in Google My Business. Real story, we just had to like escalate it over the course of a week. Somebody put a picture of a SS stormtrooper as a photo for an auto dealership. This this like happens, yeah. right? It's like all the time. I thought their support was pretty good, even though they got rid of their full support recently. I thought you could like just like send them a message or DM on Twitter, and they're pretty good about responding. But this is like not for bulk problems like that, right? Uh, so for something like that over a 500 location brand, somebody spend the time putting 500 different images. It, across. It's just a common problem across all of their locations, right? So you'd have to go through create a spreadsheet list, and like that's like generally the way that Google support works with multi location brands is through mm -hmm. like sending spreadsheets. And so without that dedicated account rep, there, it's just hard to document it all, right? And and get it into the place where somebody can do something about it. Got it. Cool. Um, any other issues that you have at Google My Business? I mean, they're constantly they, they seem more stable than they used to be in terms of at least the features in Google My Business. Uh, maybe not about the spam is getting maybe a little bit better or no? I, it's like not a thing you see in the enterprise space. It seems to be like a, a huge problem. I, I guess I would say like another pet peeve is like we talked about this earlier, right? Like Geo is separate from search, so they're way underfunded, way understaffed, right? Like in the Geo department, they also have Google Maps, like the driving product. Yeah. That's a way higher tier priority for that department, right? For that team than Google My Business, right? And gets budgeted accordingly and everything like that. And so just have I talked to a couple of the product managers over there at one of the local U Advanced, and they're they are understaffed. Well, they, they, it's funny because they put so much money into Google Plus, which was then kind of Google local stuff was all funneled through Google Plus in the day. Yeah, they just their team leadership and like where they sat and all this stuff has been jerked around with like no clear right. mission or policy. Like they don't have clear policies around listing removal, which is like a, a I know is a huge internal thing they're working on to get like a coherent policy statement right about all types of listings and what's eligible and what's not to make it so that you don't have to go to support or get like spend money to get the listings and then get them suspended. Right? There's all this kind of stuff around so it. So you're feeling people who work in the Google My Business team kind oh, of feel like man. they're unappreciated maybe. I mean, if you think about it, the Google they work on a small team at a big corporation. Yeah. Yeah. And they, that team has multiple branding changes over the years, probably multiple leadership changes. Yeah. And it's just not important. Again. And there's directives that come down from above, right, on like how certain things have to be treated, like all the policies around uh, like what happens when a review attack happens. Right. That's like an executive level policy at Google that's been set that the GMB team just needs to like operate on, right? But there's no backflow into the policy apparatus, right? right? They don't have they have a clear, coherent policy sometimes around search and what they do with search, but but not on local. Yeah, and Danny, I guess you know, announcing something like this, even being from the search team, maybe there's some signs of maybe some of them working together, maybe. Yeah, I, like I wish Danny would like come out and say um, one of the things I grilled the Google My Business product manager on is like tell me all the good stuff that you guys are doing, right? Because we all we hear, hear about like the dumpster fires and it being broken all the time, but they do tons of work removing like like um, financial fraud and stuff like that from pack results that never gets talked about, right? Like and so people only see like the G, like the business name spam or like the the you know the lead gen listing spam. They don't see the like hundreds of thousands of you know financial uh, financial fraud uh, uh, GMB profiles that were. Or put up or anything like that. It's just not communicated. They got to do their own marketing internally and externally so they can get more funding and more love from the yeah. community. So. Yeah, no one, ever, no one here has ever said, said or heard anything like that. That's true. That's <laughs> definitely true. Well, thank you so much for doing this. I appreciate it. Yeah. How can people learn more, you, more about you and follow you online? Yeah, uh, at Dan Leapson on Twitter and Dan at localseoguide.com. Cool. Thank you very much. Pleasure. So that was Dan from Local SEO Guide, super smart guy. He can talk about pretty much any topic. But his specialty seems to be local, obviously. Um, and we were able to talk a little bit about the neural matching update, which happened in early November. Google actually confirmed it a month later. Um, so it's nice to have Google confirm that and to have Dan's thoughts about that update.